All right, good. We have not, because it's so early in the season, had any opportunity to talk to you about a French Roots audience. Now, I gotta tell you something. There isn't any place in New York City, any place in London, that we could go with French Roots kids that they would turn us away. They love us as an audience because we follow some basic audience rules. Now, I want you to understand what they are. You never get up while a performer is performing. If they are performing a number, you stay still. If you have to use the restroom, you wait until intermission. And there will be an inter intermission. I believe it's about, what, 20 minutes in? Am I right? Yeah. So, in about 20 minutes, you're going to have an intermission, and you will be able to use the restroom. This is not the time. Another thing, I don't know that this is going to happen tonight because these are not kids that you go to camp with. Never, ever pick out one kid on the stage and cheer for that one kid. Ever. No, never do that. It is strictly rude. Okay? You've got an orchestra here. There are, what, about 35 of them? Yeah. You cheer for one, and you're insulting 35 others. It's really extremely rude. Don't do that. Okay, so that's two rules. One other. You can't use, you can take pictures. Okay, if you have a camera, you can take pictures. You cannot use a flash at any of our performances. Okay? When your parents are here, I would tell them they can't smoke. But I'm not worried about that. <laughs> All right? I am going to turn the, uh, the microphone over to Brian Warsdale and let him introduce what you're about to say. Brian? So, I'm very honored to wear multiple hats, and, and for 30 years I, I wear my French Woods tag, and I wear my French Woods staff shirt at work every day. And this year is special, and we've been working, trying to get this to happen for a few years now, and then some pesky pandemic got in the way, and you know, all these other things. The, the groups you're about to hear were, were scheduled to play at Carnegie Hall in April of 2020, and then, of course, we all know what happened. And so you'll notice that we're all wearing our, I'm, I'm now wearing my tripod colors. And it says here, for real this time, because tomorrow we'll be getting on buses and we're going to play at one of the most famous concert halls in the world. But before we play at one of the most famous concert halls in the world, we have to play at my most happy place concert hall in the world, and that's the pavilion here at French Woods. This is my happy place. It's been my happy place for a long time. And, um, and it's really nice to see other people on the podium at my happy place, and that's what you're going to see now. This group that you see in front of you is our symphonette. This is the Three Rivers Young People's Orchestra. This is a youth orchestra program in Pittsburgh. These young people came in on Saturday by bus, a eight hour drive, which was supposed to be only six and a half, but whatever. And uh, they got here, they rehearsed, they enjoyed a lot of the great activities that you all get to do every day, and they rehearsed, and they got ready for this performance. And we're performing for you what they're going to perform at Carnegie Hall, but also a bonus, you get to hear this wonderful orchestra. This is our symphonette under the direction of Mr. Pierce Cook, hopefully future French Wood staff member, uh, who, uh, who is the head of strings at Mellon Middle School uh, in Pittsburgh and, and does a wonderful job with these young musicians. And you'll also notice that some of them look a little more longer in the teeth, and those are alums of this orchestra who play in YPO that have volunteered to help out since only about 28 of them made the journey uh, this year for this trip out of the almost 50 that play in the group, 50. So, Mr. Cook, they're all yours. Enjoy. Symphonette, everybody. Thank you. 
right, so as was indicated to you, your intermission is just in two more tunes. So I'm going to introduce both, and uh, that way I don't have to talk in between the two. And they're very, very different pieces. This next one is uh, African American spiritual. Um, came from transcriptions of songs that were sung on plantations by slaves. And the song is called Deep River. Uh, and I say song because it is literally a song. We talked about how in classical music that can be a bit of a pet peeve because uh, it's not a song, it's a piece, it's a composition. But this is an actual song with actual words that talk about things like longing to cross the river, which could be symbolism or it could be literal. Longing to find freedom, which could be a symbolic thought or it could be literal as well. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous kind of heart-wrenching melody called Deep River. And then we're gonna just emotionally flip you again for our last tune called Green Rhythmico. And in that instance, there will be a couple soloists. So at the end, you will be able to give those soloists a bit of a rousing round of applause. So two more for you, Deep River and Green Rhythmico. Thank you so much.
So everyone stand up for a second. Stand up. Stand up. Stretch. Give yourself a little stretch. There you go. YPO, would you head backstage, grab your instruments. Symphonette, you can go out that way or that way. And then you'll go to your seats when these, when these wonderful cats get out of your seats. Okay. We're going to make this transition as quick as possible. And you know what, Miss Nova, do you want to do that now? I want to introduce you. Why don't you stretch if you guys can have a seat? Shh. You guys notice, we only saw one family of instruments on stage just now. What, what family? Okay, we saw no brass, no percussion, no shh. Okay, all you saw were the strings. Okay, now you're going to see and hear the full symphony orchestra. And let me tell you something. I've been listening to them. Brian, how many musicians are on stage? A lot. <laughs> like a really a lot, as we say in public, really a lot, a lot. There are about 95, is that right? Look, 115 minus, what is it? 115 minus 28, what is it? 95. Mm -hmm. Give or take. The stage only does this a couple of times a summer. We worry about it if we did it too often. How are we doing? How are we doing? We close? Almost there? Some kind of person left something there. Did you leave your uh, candy bar? Music? You okay there? Holly? Ah, his folder. Very important to use a folder. Patty, you ready? Ready? Becky, you ready?
recognize that piece. Okay. If you didn't know it, that was a piece by American composer Leonard Bernstein, born in 1918, died in 1990, was the first American to lead a major symphony orchestra, the New York Philharmonic. He was born in Lenox, Massachusetts, but New York became his home, and it became his final home, yeah, actually in Brooklyn. And uh, that is his Overture to Candide, written in 1956, and written during the same time he was writing material for basically what became a Broadway masterpiece, West Side Story. Yeah. Okay. Oh, West Side Story, yeah. thank you. Oh my God, West Side Story. Actually, to be honest, while I don't scream that loud, pretty much that's my reaction anytime someone says, would you like to conduct West Side Story? So there you go, so whoever that was, good for you. Um, Believe it or not, some of you who actually know West Side Story, if you've done the show, some of the music in West Side Story was actually intended for Candide and vice versa. Uh, one Hand, One Heart, actually, that, they, that, that Tony uh, sings with Maria, actually belonged in Candide. It was what Candide and Kudaganta sang to each other. <coughs> However, it felt better in West Side Story, and Bernstein, like many composers, said, let me shift this over to this. So, now we're going to go to another American composer who is still very much with us uh, at the tender age of, I think, was it 94? I think he's 94, and he's still with us. And you all know who he is, I'm sure, but because you've listened to his music, you've watched his movies. You've watched the movies that have his music. Can anybody guess who it is? John Williams. That was cute. Who said John Williams? Raise your hands, that's right. So, one of my favorite scores of John Williams one of my favorite scores that all that harkens to childhood and just really just everything was a great film starring the late great Robin Williams, also Dustin Hoffman. Um, believe it or not, Meryl Streep. No, it was Glenn Close. I'm sorry, Glenn Close has a cameo in that film that most people don't even know about. He's a pirate, <laughs> as is David Crosby from Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Um, it is one of my favorite of the of those movies. And the music is just pure about just youth and, and childhood and so much fun. And this music takes place, this is the flight to Neverland. This is the music that you start hearing when you hear Toodles talk about the fact that Robin, that um, uh, Robin Williams' character, Peter Panning, has to fight, has to fly, has to save, his, has to save um, uh, Jack and, and his sister and they bring them to Neverland. And it changes Peter Panning's life forever. I'd love to bring up, speaking of someone who has grown up here at French Woods and has had that experience, someone who is actually a alum of this group, played in this group uh, just about the same time that he started coming to French Woods. Then wound up getting the opportunity to conduct one of our other orchestras in town, the Pittsburgh Youth Symphony Orchestra. When he was a student there, he won a competition to conduct them in a performance. And he conducted here on his last concerto night. It was actually his concerto that, uh, in a sense, that he conducted one of our soloists. And he's one of your music directors. Those of you in Chicago or Peach know our next conductor. Please welcome Mr. Mitchell Dubin.
on, hold on. Is, outside of Tijuana, is that the first time you've conducted an or the orchestra on stage here? You can think about it for a second. Is it the first time? Besides Concerta. And you lost your baton during the concert. <laughs> Do you know that my very first performance here, when I was, I think, your age, how old are you now? 20? Yeah, I was 19. Was, Scott and I put me in front of the concert band that conducted Dvorak last movement. And what happened? The Tom went flying across the room, almost impaled Ron. <laughs> exactly. Let's do it, everybody. back then, you know, that we have, during the winter we'd have a reunion and we'd be at an elementary school somewhere in like Lower Manhattan. Remember when we used to do that, Ron? We used to have that. And I, there's a picture actually of me and Scott Schaefer and Isaac looking a lot thinner, with a lot more hair, and a and, and, and lot less tired than, you know, we are now. Um, but they would do a video, and, you know, back then, because everything was like tape and not digital, you know, we, they had to really do a lot of work. So they would show, there was no, you know how we have the end of camp video, that, like we sit here and watch it? We had to wait six months to watch it, and you had to go to the reunion to see it. So someone had taken Chariots of Fire, you know, da 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 da, and in slow motion, they, my baton went flying across the screen. That was very cool, very cool. Um, the next piece is a significant piece, and it's something, this is, a, this is educational for you all. This is by a composer named Omar Thomas. Omar was born in Brooklyn, and he's an African American composer. And the story of this piece is as follows. In 2015, those of you who um, are old enough to remember, there was this horrific uh, bombing at a church in Alabama. Absolutely tragic act of terrorism and violence that took the lives of more than seven people. And, uh, and it just so happened that uh, this church was perpendicular to the convention hall where the all-state band was going to be playing just a few months later. And the conductor there said, we have to do something to, to call attention to this in a way that, that solemnized the, 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 what happened and, and the events. And eventually Omar was contacted and asked if he would write a piece. And Omar's first reaction was, no, I can't do it. One, I'm too close emotionally to it. I can't, I can't write something about this. I'm, I'm a black man. I can't do this. This is, this is too heavy for me. And then he called his dad, and he was just catching up, and he, and he said, and by the way, I got asked to write this piece because of what happened in this the church in Alabama. And his father said to him, well, you're going to write the piece, right? You need to write this piece. You, you need to write this piece. And so Omar wrote it. And it was written originally for band. And then just about a year and a half ago, right during the pandemic, Jeff Brogan, who had been on the stage a few times, um, commissioned an orchestral version which we are giving the premiere of tomorrow at Carnegie Hall. So you're getting to hear this piece. It has not been performed very often uh, in its orchestral form. It's, it's based on a song that some of you will, will hear on 4th of July if you're here next session that is considered the, um, the national anthem for the African-American movement, which is Lift Every Voice and Sing. And you will hear the words sung by this orchestra. Uh, when we played this at Heinz Hall just a couple of weeks ago, um, this orchestra moved me to, to the point where uh, I was visibly sobbing during the performance. Uh, and I had to go off stage, and instead of taking another bow, I literally had to stay backstage because that's how well they understood the piece. Uh, this is a significant work. It's a very serious work. We hope you enjoy it. This is Of Our New Day Begun.
here? Yeah, good, okay. <coughs> Pretty powerful stuff, huh? Yeah. Um, composer friend of mine, um, who looks like me, was conducting this piece because he's a good friend of Omar's, and he was trying to describe to the orchestra, or the band actually, how, how to understand the emotion of this piece. This took a long time for these wonderful musicians to understand, because guess what? We don't understand. I, I don't understand. I can try, and that's my job, I can try to understand, but um, Omar said something very interesting to him, because they tried to understand what the significance of this was. Like the agony, the, you hear that scream, you hear that, there's that moment where the orchestra just screams before they sing with every voice and sing. And it's hard to get that. And I'm just very proud of them for making the attempt to understand. So thank you for being such a great listening audience. by the way of Spain, by the way of Russia, a great um, composer named Rimsky Korsakov wrote a bunch of stuff uh, that had nothing to do with where he was from because he was such a great orchestrator and composer and was inspired. This is a piece in five movements. We will not be taking breaks between the movements. You'll notice we go from one to the next to the next. It is a brilliant display of orchestral fortitude, as I like to call it. This dis displays every section of the orchestra. It gives every section a solo in some way, shape, or form. You're going to hear some great players. You're going to hear some great music. Um, I am so proud of this group. And so this is Capriccio Espanol.
I love that my doctor says I get no exercise. Um, I like my, my shoes. I decided to get cool with the kids, you know. My khaki pants and my Concord Carnegie t-shirt. Um, you know, anybody here staying for session two, raise your hand. You are going to be in store for a treat. Our 4th of July concert is probably one of the coolest things you'll ever experience. And it's great for a lot of reasons, but I, I love this tradition we've done where we do, we, do our, we do our own little interlocking thing. Those of you who have been to that lovely place somewhere over here in Michigan, um, every, every summer at the end of the summer they do a piece called Les Preludes by Friends List and the president, the CEO of Interlocking conducts it. Well, we've got our own president, our own CEO, and we have a tradition with our own CEO and he conducts the Battle of the Republic and the Stars and Stripes forever, but there was no way, there was no way that I was not going to ask him what his favorite piece of music would be if he had a chance to conduct an orchestra like this. There was just no way it wasn't going to happen. Ron flew out to Pittsburgh, my very, my debut concert. With, with Trico, and flew all the way out to Pittsburgh. Uh, when we did an open house together, but then um, the next day he came to our concert, um, and then rushed back to the hotel right by the airport so he could get home the next day, but he listened to every single note, and in true Ron fashion, he was like, the orchestra was fantastic, but I've got some ideas for you. <laughs> and, and we listened, and we listened. At Heinz Hall, we put all of our students on stage at the very end of our concert, which we're about to do after this next piece. But in talking to Ron, I was like, what would you like to do? You all know this piece. I am not going to tell you the title, but I am going to bring up the big guy so he can conduct this amazing orchestra. <laughs>
Uh, we have a quick introduction, real quick. I want everyone to meet. Uh, you know, I, I have a number of bosses in my life. The person I'm married to, and the two people that, and my my mother, of course, and, as well. And then, of course, the two people that I basically work for all the time. And it's the guy over here who I've worked for since I'm 18 years old, and the person that I moved to Pittsburgh to work for, who is probably one of the most awesome human beings I've met in Pittsburgh, or actually met anywhere really. Um, also a horn player, husband plays in the symphony, but she's the executive director of Tripo. This is Miss Lindsay Nova. Hello everyone, it is so awesome to be here. I just can't believe the welcome we have had. Tripo, I'm so, so, so proud of you, Symphonette, you sounded amazing. And I just can't believe how welcome we have felt. It has just been such an honor to be here. We dreamed about this since we hired this guy. I mean, you know, the bride came through for me to hire the guy. So, um, but we dreamed about this since that first happened, and we finally made it work. So, high five, Brian. So, we have a little. Uh, I'd like to bring up Beth and well, and Isaac as well for this. So, Isaac, would you come up here, please? Can you give them a tripo welcome? Let's show French Woods what a tripo welcome looks like. Yes, Infinite, join in. Yes, excellent. So we love our we love our tripo gear around here, and as you can see, oh, that is actually. Yes. Oh, wait, move the stands out of the way. He's a little bit big. <laughs> Tripo gear with pride, so thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you. All right. I think we're going to do one more. Yes, we are. One more, please, guys. One more. Okay. We have one more piece for you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the piece. Um, um, this is a piece by Otto Rino speaking. Uh, name by the uh, what what I just wanted to yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> this is a piece that was written. Uh, he wrote a bunch of different po tone poems. Tone, you know what a tone poem is? Who knows what a tone poem is? Raise your hand. Tone poem is a musical story. It's a story told through music, and he told three different stories. One was the fountains of Rome. One was the festivals of Rome. This one is known as the pines of Rome. While we have the pines of French woods, Rome has lots of awesome pines as well. There are, there are five movements to this piece. Uh, the last movement in particular is, is the one we're going to play for you. And we're featuring some of our brass players from French woods, but we're also featuring our symphonette, just like we did at Heinz Hall just a couple of weeks ago. And what's really great about this piece is that it has this mystery about it. It's almost like it's a foggy, foggy moment. If you know the pines of the Appian Way, if you know Italy, the Appian Way is the major, major road that basically goes into Rome. And Rome, uh, you know, Rome, Rome didn't, you know, Greeks brought us democracy and plays. Rome brought us conquest and lots of other things. And eventually some cacio pepe and some nice Italian food that went along with it. So, um, but when they would conquer and they would come back, they would come back with who they conquered, they would march them into town, and this movement kind of has that sound to it. It has this like, like ghost-like eeriness about this, this, this history of this piece. So this features all of our musicians, including all, all the here in the, in, the, in the cheap seats. So we have been, we're so, so fortunate to have had this experience. I am so, I, I, I can't tell you, I, 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 it's like I bring one, my new home, to hey, my home. Hey, Brian. So. Brian. Yeah. As good and as wonderful as the orchestra is, and it is wonderful, this is one wonderful audience. Oh, I was about to say that, too. I was about to say that as well. I was about to say that. But, but, but thank you very much. Awesome it would be the, you know, the screaming, the shouting. Um, 
No, you guys have been terrific, actually, and it's 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 wonderful that you support each other because these are young people playing for you. And you know what happens is we all go in the pits, we play the shows, for, you know, we all work together, and it's just tremendous. And this is a great way to send us off to Carnegie Hall tomorrow. We're going to be up at the crack of dawn on the road by eight o'clock, so we can play our sound check. And uh, I will say this: while I am a New Yorker, and my father will probably never forgive me for this. We are doing the Pines of Rome, and we are from Pittsburgh, so.
Ron, they're all yours. Guys, we're going to ask you all to sit down and let's see if we can do this easily. I, I like all junior lodges and boys one and two, girls one, two, and three. Get up and over to the canteen. Everybody else, stay where you are. 